Audi's e-tron EV brand gets a sharper edge with this e-tron Sportback model. This coupe SUV has a much more stylish look and, like the standard SUV variant, offers the choice of two battery sizes and two or three motor drive options. If you thought Jaguar's I-Pace was the only battery-powered luxury large SUV capable of rewarding at the wheel, a driving one of these might make you think again. Electric cars may have come on quite a lot since you last looked. Uh, two electric motors, they're now de rigueur on larger luxury models like this one. And uniquely, faster versions of this Audi can now even offer three. We'll get to that after we've briefed you on the core offering here for the twin motor e-tron Sportback 50 and e-tron Sportback 55 models that most customers for this model line would be looking at. Uh, both share pretty much the same engineering as the existing boxier e-tron SUV that we first tried back in 2019, uh, which means that as with that body shape, there are two battery options, the base 50 variant using a 71 kilowatt hour power pack and the more popular 55 derivative, which like all other e-tron sportbacks features the bigger 95 kilowatt hour battery that we've got here. Either way, with these two models, uh, your battery of choice powers two electronically linked asynchronous motors, uh, one on each axle. This in turn creates an electrified interpretation of Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. Although in low demand situations, the car will be rear driven thanks to a decoupling system, uh, which disconnects the front drive motor when it's not needed. Uh, as you might expect, uh, the electric motor output that you get depends on the variant that you choose. Uh, the entry level 50 Quattro model offers 313 PS and it has a 201 mile rated range. The 55 Quattro variant has 360 PS or up to 408 PS if you select the S overboost mode and its bigger battery improves the range figure to a still rather modest 259 miles. That's in between 8.9 hour charging sessions using the 11 kilowatt wall box charger that Ali recommends. If you're lucky enough to find one of the rare 150 kilowatt public charging points, up to 95% of battery capacity can be replenished in just 50 minutes. The other variant available in the range is the one that we're trying here, the top e-tron S Sportback performance version, uh, the world's first electric vehicle to use three drive motors. The larger electric motor that on a conventional e-tron Sportback sits at the rear has been here moved to the front and that frees up space for twin smaller motors to sit on the back axle. And that allows torque vectoring and fully variable torque distribution between the rear wheels for considerably enhanced and really rather astonishing uh, levels of cornering agility. Extra motive power in this S model means a higher output of course, up to 435 PS with 808 newton meters of torque, or with the S mode engaged for overtaking 503 PS with a thumping 973 newton meters of torque. That is enough to simply hurl this Audi at the horizon. Uh, 62 from rest is recorded at 4.5 seconds. Uh, driving more sedately, the S variance WLTP rated driving range figure is 236 miles. Unlike its rivals from Jaguar and Mercedes, Audi fits air suspension as standard to all e-tron sportbacks and it imperiously deals with speed bumps and potholes, plus it can lower itself to give the car greater stability at speed. You can also uh, use this setup to raise the car by up to 72 millimeters and that gives it a surprising degree of off-road prowess. This Audi can also select its own level of brake regeneration or you can dial that down or up yourself by using the steering wheel paddles. Talking of brakes, uh, the ones here are excellent thanks to a uh, very clever electro-hydraulic brake control system which combines brake regeneration and the wheel brakes in one single pedal movement. Uh, like much else about this car, it's very clever. What we've got here is certainly a substantial piece of Ingolstadt real estate, over 4.9 metres long and sitting over 1.6 metres high, although there's plenty of panel work sculpting to disguise the bulk, including this mid-level crease that flows through the door handles and this prominent upper swage line that emphasises the powerful rear haunches. The lower edge of this third side window rises towards the rear, a typical sport back feature, and between this upward slanting lower crease and the lower side sills is a trim panel that's either black with the standard e-tron sportback or silver with this S model. Either way it's supposed to draw the eye to where the battery and thus the energy 
centre of the car can be found. Nice touches include the optional virtual mirrors, L-shaped pods which protrude on aerodynamic stalks, replacing the ordinary door mirrors, and the inclusion of charging flaps on both sides of the car behind the front wheel arches. They feature copper-themed e-tron badges and they neatly open with the push of a button. And of course there are big wheels which on this S model sit in arches 23 millimetres wider. The rims themselves vary between 21 and 22 inches in size. We've got the 21 inch 5 Y-spoke rotor gloss anthracite black diamond cut sport alloys here. As usual with modern Audis, the front end is dominated by the kind of huge octagonal single frame grille you might think an EV wouldn't need. Uh, this one, which has lower e-tron branding, is light platinum grey uh, with vertical struts. And if you look closer, you'll see it's mainly enclosed, signalling the car's battery status. At the rear, as is usual with Audi's latest large models, a light strip connects the LED tail lamps to each other, emphasising the substantial 1935mm body width. Enough of the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. Which, as you'd expect, is the same up front as with the company's ordinary boxier e-tron large SUV, which means that you get two central MMI touch response displays which blend into vast swathes of piano black trim. You view another screen through the four-spoke wheel. This one is a 12.3-inch virtual cockpit monitor, which includes a power meter covering the car's charging and regenerative functions. And more screens can be added too if you pay extra for Audi's clever virtual exterior mirror package. And that replaces the usual exterior mirrors on each side of the car with a little camera on a stalk which relays images back to a 7-inch OLED display at the top of each front door. Anyway, enough on screens, um, the leather stitched seats are superbly comfortable and they position you really fairly loftily, which is one of the reasons why forward vision is excellent. And there's plenty of interior storage uh, that includes this central open-sided compartment uh, between the seats here, which is intended to have the feel of a light, sleek sculpture. It's unusual, much like this gear selector, which is operated by a hand rest, which appears to float above the console and is activated by a one-touch action conducted with either thumb or index finger. OK, let's take a seat in the rear. This Sportback's 20mm reduction in ceiling height might bother you if you're a six-footer. Your head will be brushing this immaculately crafted roof liner, but otherwise it feels pretty spacious back here. We'll finish with a look at cargo space. Now there is a compartment under the bonnet, but since that's only 60 litres in size, we'll ignore it and focus on the boot area. You get a powered tailgate, of course, which rises to reveal a 555 litre luggage bay for this sport back body shape, which is 45 litres less than the ordinary boxier e-tron SUV body shape can offer. Uh, there's also a useful underfloor storage area. Fold down the rear bench, which folds conveniently in a 40-20-40 split, and 50 1,595 litres of capacity is freed up. That's 60 litres less than the ordinary e-tron SUV body shape. Arguably, this Sportback e-tron variant is a car the standard model ought to be. A large, luxury EV that's more than just a statement of technology, but one instead with extra pavement presence and an added dose of engagement. The compromise is required over the ordinary e-tron SUV in terms of rear seat passenger space and luggage capacity shouldn't be too taxing for most likely owners to make. And this Sportback variant uh, also showcases some useful changes to e-tron tech which Audi has made since this sub-brand's original launch. Ultimately, as with the ordinary e-tron SUV, you have to really like the Audi brand to really want one of these. But if you appreciate Ingolstadt's cool, understated, considered approach to luxury motoring, then here, a future that's very Vorsprung Dirk Elektrisch beckons. <laughs>